Hey there! Welcome to this video tutorial, where I'm going to guide you through the process of getting started with ShapeSpark. I'll be breaking down each step for you. So by the end of this tutorial you'll have a solid understanding of how to work with ShapeSpark. Alright, let's dive into the workflow. It's super simple, and applies across different 3D modeling programs you might be using. Here's how it goes. Step 1 involves crafting your model. Once you've got that all set, the next move is to bring it into ShapeSpark. Within ShapeSpark, you'll fine-tune the lighting, perfect the materials, carry out the baking process, and your creation is ready for upload. Once it's up there, feel free to share it with anyone you like. And there you have it a seamless process. Right now, it's crucial to highlight that I've specialized exporters for 3ds Max, SketchUp, and Revit. If you're using a different tool, you can use FBX, Colada, or OBJ formats to bring it to ShapeSpark. Allow me to demonstrate the process within SketchUp. Our ShapeSpark extension gets automatically added when you install our software. To access it, just head over to the extension section, it's right there waiting for you. Click on Export, and before you know it, your model will pop up in the ShapeSpark editor. Easy as that. You'll notice that all the materials have been smoothly transferred over to ShapeSpark, along with the exact sun placement you configured in SketchUp. Now let me give you a glimpse of what you'll discover within our editor. Once you've imported your model into ShapeSpark, it's time to check the sunlight direction and the overall lighting. In the Materials tab, set the opacity of each transparent material to a value close to zero. For example, for plain glass use opacity of 0.05. In particular, the windows should allow the outside light to enter the interiors. To see the preview, just use the preview button in the bake tab, or press the I key on your keyboard. Now, if you're looking to illuminate your scene, head over to the Light tab. As the lights were exported from the SketchUp project, we do not have to illuminate the scene ourselves. If the light from the outside is too weak or too strong, adjust the settings of the sunlight and the sky. To adjust the settings of the sunlight, go to the Lights tab. Select the sunlight from the list of lights and change its strength and the rotation value. You may add various types of light, such as spot, point and area lights. Let me demonstrate by quickly adding one point light to the lamp in the living room, and then we'll move forward. After setting up all the lighting just the way you like it, let's go over to the Bake tab. Here, you'll see different presets for baking quality. To start, I suggest using the draft preset for your first bake. This helps you spot places where your model might need some touch-ups. The results of your baking will show up right in the viewer window. Your model will look a lot more real. This is a great time to take a closer look and see if there is anything that needs improvement.
Now I'll show you the difference between the draft and super baking quality. Now it's time to polish your scene. A light probe captures a panorama of its surroundings and is necessary to generate reflections in nearby objects. During model import, ShapeSpark tries to automatically detect rooms where light probes should be placed. If this automatic placement works for your scene, the Light Probes tab will show the light probes that were added automatically, and you can skip this step. You can easily change a placement of light probes or add new ones if needed. Switch to the Materials tab. Now when you select an object in the viewer window, its material becomes highlighted in the list of materials. There are two properties that define how each material reflects light, metallic and roughness. Use metallic to define if a material is made out of metal. Use roughness to define how smooth the surface is. Now, for the final step, let's set up some ready-to-go views for important spots in your scene, making it user-friendly. Go to the Viewer tab to create a new view from a walking perspective, like you're walking through the scene. Just click the plus walk button and name it, say a living room. If you ever want to change the view, move the camera in the scene and hit set current. As you add more views, you'll see the list in the top right corner of the viewer window. When your initial model is prepared, you can close ShapeSpark editor window. To share your scene online, simply click on the upload button within the main ShapeSpark window. Once the scene is successfully uploaded, a pop-up will appear, providing you with a link to access your scene. Additionally, you'll find the scene readily available in the Scenes tab within your ShapeSpark account at cloudshapespark.com. To wrap up this tutorial, I encourage you to dive in and enjoy exploring ShapeSpark. Have fun creating stunning visualizations, and don't hesitate to unleash your creativity. Happy designing!